Hi everyone, welcome to the Swift Arcade. I'm your host, Jonathan Rasmussen. It's true. Yesterday I was posting some code about views and closures and I wasn't particularly careful about how I was using them. I introduced a retain cycle into my code without even realizing it. And in this episode, I wanna show you the mistake I made, what a retain cycle is and how you can fix them in your projects. Okay, before I show you the problem I introduced in the code yesterday, let's go over quickly what a retain cycle is. Basically, retain cycle is any time you have two classes in Swift and they have strong references to each other. For example, take this book in a page. Here I've got a class called book. It has a variable of pages. Pages is also a class. It has a reference back to book. This creates what's called a strong retain cycle, meaning even if page goes away, book still has a reference to it, but even if book goes away, pages still could have reference to it. And these cycles reference each other, meaning when one gets cleaned up or it gets removed from memory, it can still contain a link or a reference to the other one hanging around. And because variables are objects and they have strong reference types by default in Swift, this is something we need to be careful of when we're working with classes, anything with the reference types, and in particular UI kit. Let me show you what this looks like in a sample app. Now in the example I was working on yesterday, I showed how basically we can extract a view and then use closures to communicate back from the view to the view controller in our Weatherly app here. So when someone comes up here and searches for the weather in a particular city, I can have that extracted view communicate back by setting a closure or invoking some code when the search field is activated. So this is a really elegant technique. We define a closure here, which passes back the text field. And then in our view controller, we can paste basically pass in or set the function we want to call when that closure is called. So in this case, in my weather view controller, I've got an instance pointing to weather view. Remember, these are both classes now. So the fact that I'm in a class and I'm pointing to another class and passing in a closure, that introduces the retain cycle. And that's what I didn't see yesterday. So here's a very simple example of a class which defines a closure and then references, references itself in the closure. That's what sets up the retain cycle. That's what's dangerous. That's what we want to avoid. There's two ways we can break this. One is we can use a capture list to basically define the reference to herself as weak in the closure. This is great because now instead of self having a strong reference here, by making this weak, that breaks the cycle. And now we've only got the strong reference going one way and a weak reference going back to self the other. That's one way of breaking the retain cycle. This is probably the safest. This is the thing you'll normally want to do when breaking retain cycles, and it's really our go-to uh, method for doing it. There is another keyword, which can be a bit confusing in Swift, but it does have its time and place, and that is unowned self. This is basically just like weak. The only difference here is this makes this a unwrapped version of self. So now you can go in here, use self directly. You don't need to unwrap the optional, like we did up here. And basically you would only ever use this if you were absolutely certain that self was going to be there when you needed it. In other words, if it's not, this will cause a runtime error and blow up if self isn't there. So you only want to do this in those cases where you're absolutely sure and you want to save yourself a question mark here. But the safer thing to typically do is go ahead and use the weak self and break the retain cycle that way. So getting back to my app, how am I going to solve this problem of breaking the retain cycle between the view controller and the view? Well, basically what I can do is go ahead and use that weak self uh, guidance here in my view controller. Instead of directly passing in the function fetch weather when I go to set that closure on the view, what I can do instead is set up a function that sets that for me. So basically instead of going view controller uh, search fetch weather passing in like this, I can create a function called setup search handler. And what that will do instead is that will create an instance of the closure that I actually want. And here's where the magic happens. When I go to define it, I can define it as a weak self. So now I don't have that strong closure back. I can go ahead and 
use the text field passed in. Here's where my optional self is set. So I can go ahead and do the work that I was doing down here in my previous uh, fetch weather method. And that's how I can safely set this closure in my view controller by making the reference back to myself weak. Now, if I really wanted to get you know fancy, one thing I could do instead is I could inline this up here. So if I preferred you know this syntax over setting it here, I could come up here and inline this just like this. But because I prefer keeping my functions at the same level of abstraction, I thought this was getting a little bit too deep here, and I prefer just handling it like uh, like this with the search handler there. So that's how we can break that. And if I just wanted to do it for the other one, I also have a location uh, weather handler that I could come in here and set up like this. And that would also set up my location one. So basically instead of passing it in like this, I could also go set up weather result handler, get rid of that call there. And then I no longer need these functions down here because I'm now doing them in the closures that I've set up there. Well, there you have it, friends. That's an example of what a retain cycle is, how you can see them in our projects. And really, whenever you're working with closures, that is something you need to be aware of. I totally missed it yesterday when I created that demo and I inadvertently showed you how to introduce a retain cycle into your app. But basically, just by being aware that every time you're defining a closure, it's really good to check to see whether you're referencing back to yourself. You can solve these problems by creating a capture list, passing in weak self, and breaking that retain cycle. And it's just, it's just a fact of life and something we do need to be aware of when working with UIKit and Swift when we're working with those stronger reference types. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks so much, and uh, we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>